Hi, I'm uh, Father Kevin Conroy, an uh, associate priest from Cleveland, Ohio, working with Marinol for six years. Today we're going to a village uh, 75 miles away from Phnom Penh, and in this village I'll be saying Mass uh, for the Vietnamese community. Uh, the Vietnamese are the largest uh, Catholic community in Cambodia. There's about 25,000 Vietnamese Catholics in, in the country, so I don't know what percentage that is, but that's what I've heard, about 25,000. I say Mass for about six communities now. It used to be 13 communities up and down the Mekong River and the Basak River, but now it's just the Basak River. And uh, because we have another priest that will be able to do the communities on the, on the Mekong. But uh, yeah, there's a very small Catholic population, but I think it's growing. I think, uh, you know, there might be about a hundred or so people every year who are becoming Catholic, and that's after a three-year RCIA process as an adult person. And, they, and I think when they become Catholic, they really want to become, a, you know, a living Catholic, and, and they, they realize the importance and how significant that is for them. I'd say that the first ones that converted saw the work of Marinol in the camps on, on the border when there was hardly anybody in Cambodia. And I think, yeah, I think the example of compassion and, and mercy and service are really fundamental, let's say, and, and why people would even choose to become Catholic. I think things like meditation and prayer, because we're in the East here, I think are, are fundamental here. And uh, we have ways of, of, of developing that or, you know, by living here. And uh, Mary Nall helps us in some ways to have different experiences of meditation and prayer that I think have been good. I'd say there is fatalism. There is also sometimes a sense of ghosts and spirits that people are afraid of and things like that. I hope that they see within the Catholic Christian faith that it's it's not about that, it's about hope and it's about love and community and building a better world. And so maybe there is one of the differences that we might have, um, although I think we share many things with our Buddhist brothers and sisters too. Um, I'd say that for me the, uh, the challenges are, are met by, uh, yeah, there are many. The trauma of the past, the history of trauma here is it's probably one of the most traumatic, traumatized places in the world, but uh, I think that uh, the people really want to change and grow, and, uh, and so it's a good place to work post-trauma, post-war, and things like that. Well, the main trauma would be what they call the killing fields from 1975 to 1979, three years, eight months, and 20 days. And uh, basically it was two million people, 1.7 million people were killed, starved, and uh, put to death in the course of that time, which is more per day than in the Holocaust in Germany. And uh, even though there's less people than the Holocaust in Germany, it's still a bigger percentage every day were, were dying and being killed. I've heard that maybe at the end in 1979, there were only 370 people who had a high school uh, education that were alive still in this country. That's not a lot of people who are, so everybody else had less than high school education. I think that uh, things would get better, are, are getting better because there are young people who want to make the country a better place and they want to heal some of the wounds of, uh, of this country and they, they're committed to that, to making it a, a peaceful place and a better place. Uh, we have students I teach at the university here and I teach in a master's program in uh, clinical psychology and mental health and um, they, that's the first mental health program in a master's level in the country and uh, so I look at these people as the ones that are uh, really helping to treat, treat the trauma and I act as supervisor for them and, and uh, and help them to develop as professionals working with uh, trauma treatment in Cambodia. The connection is that um, I asked, the, when I went to join Marinol, I asked about what are the options. They said, well, you speak Spanish. Why don't you go back to Latin America? And I said, yeah, but I'd like to try something new. And so I said, anywhere else in the world? And uh, it's a long story, but they, uh, Cambodia, and Mozambique, and uh, Japan were the three options, and so Cambodia was the one they said, we want you to go there, and uh, 
That's how I got here. Well, learning the language was a challenge, one of the main challenges at first. Um, I enjoy learning languages, though. I guess and having learned Spanish as an adult, it, it gave me a way of trying to learn. I knew what I had to do to learn the language. Um, my background is I'm a diocesan priest from Cleveland, and uh, I used to work in El Salvador, so with the Cleveland Diocesan Mission Team. And uh, after I got done working with them, I went back to the United States and I um, did a master's degree in counseling at John Carroll University, a Jesuit university. And then I uh, did a, a PhD at Cleveland State in counseling, clinical counseling psychology. So um, I've been here now for six years and uh, loving it all the time. I know that I'll be here, I think, for the next four years. That's my next contract will be up in the it's a five-year contract. This is my second contract with Mary and all, and I definitely do like it. And so it would be uh, a challenge in some ways to go back and work in the United States. I've never converted a person in my entire life. <laughs> they convert themselves, yeah. and all she can do is invite, you know. Yeah. And, and I think people are attracted by, by what they see, and uh, they come and see, and as Jesus said, you know, come and see, and they choose whether or not to follow in the way of Jesus.